So, what do we know about the solar system's largest planet? Jupiter is a gas giant. And that's pretty much it. Scientists can only theorize about how many layers it has, how dense these layers are, and what its core looks like in general. Today, we'll get to practice and launch a needle at the speed of light into Jupiter. So, will it burst like a balloon? Or will it shrink so much that it becomes a new black hole? Or maybe it'll even fly out of the solar system. Whatever happens, it's the collision with the needle at the speed of light that will allow us to unravel the mystery of Jupiter's inner world. Naturally, a super high-speed needle should pierce right through the gas giant, right? After all, our planes fly calmly through our Earth clouds, don't they? But it's not that easy. Theoretically, a needle launched at the speed of light should travel from the surface to the center of Jupiter in less than half a second. And then, a solid core may appear on its way. The most generally accepted theory states that it consists of an extreme substance, something called metallic hydrogen. In 2017, scientists from Harvard University, Isaac Silvera and Ranga Diaz managed to synthesize metallic hydrogen at a pressure of 500 gigapascals, which is 5 million times more than our atmospheric pressure. In the lab, the substance lasted a few seconds and then evaporated. But due to extreme conditions, there should be a lot of this stuff in the center of Jupiter. So, what will happen if a needle crashes into such a core at the speed of light? A chain reaction and an explosion of incredible power? Not so fast. A typical metal needle weighs only two-tenths of a gram, while Jupiter's mass is measured in octillions of kilograms. This difference is even more striking than between a human and a bacterium. Besides, Jupiter has in the past completely swallowed much bigger objects hurtling at incredible speeds. In 1994, fragments of the comet called Shoemaker-Levy 9 crashed into the gas giant, but they all burned up in the atmosphere before reaching the core. And paradoxically, for our needle, speed will not be an advantage, but an insurmountable obstacle. According to the theory of relativity, at the speed of light, the energy of even two-tenths of a gram of matter will be virtually infinite. This means that when colliding with the very first atom of Jupiter's atmosphere, the needle will turn into an incredibly powerful pulse of energy, blow away the entire gas layer surrounding Jupiter. So, will we then see the core and confirm that it really exists? Eh, wrong. After all, after getting rid of all that colossal atmospheric pressure, the metallic hydrogen will evaporate just like in our laboratory here on Earth, and we won't learn a darn thing. So, how then can we conduct a better experiment? For the needle to have a chance to reach the center of Jupiter at the speed of light and unravel its mysteries, we'll have to make it indestructible. First, it'll cut through ammonia clouds and enter a zone of extreme turbulence. The wind speed here reaches more than 120 meters per second. The Galileo spacecraft NASA crashed into Jupiter in 2003 fell apart already at this stage. But this doesn't threaten our indestructible needle. And at a depth of 250 kilometers, it'll reach a layer of gaseous hydrogen with helium impurities. Although the indestructible needle won't heat up from friction itself, it'll undoubtedly heat the atmosphere around it. And hydrogen can explode from a single spark. It seems that we'll involuntarily burn the whole of Jupiter. But fortunately, to make an explosive mixture out of hydrogen, we also need oxygen, which isn't found in any layer of the planet. But in the upper layers of its atmosphere, lightning flashes every now and then, which might cause a problem. A metal needle will attract lightning with terrible force, and even indestructibility won't save the needle from going off course after that first discharge. So, in any case, you won't be able to get to the center of the gas giant. 
Moreover, Jupiter has a powerful magnetic field that isn't limited to the atmosphere and extends into space for 7 million kilometers towards the Sun and as much as 650 million kilometers towards Saturn. And even if a needle launched at the speed of light will immediately feel this magnetism, the magnetic field lines will knock it off course, lock it down, and make it the tiniest satellite of Jupiter. Besides, even at the speed of light, it'll take only a few seconds for the needle to make only one circuit around the gas giant. But how to finally overcome all undesirable effects and return our probe to its initial course to the center of Jupiter? We'll have to make this indestructible needle from something other than metal. We could make it, for example, from refractory ceramics previously used in manufacturing space shuttle hulls. Such a needle would be three times lighter than a metal one, which means we should launch it into the part of Jupiter where atmospheric currents are minimal. How about the Great Red Spot? After all, it's always calm in the middle of even the most powerful storm. Alas, the problem is that the eye of the red spot looks completely past the core of Jupiter. Earthly logic suggests that it's better to aim at one of the poles then. However, Jupiter here is also far from being calm, with lots of chaotic thunderstorm whirlwinds. Oddly enough, ideal conditions for launching our indestructible ceramic needle would be along the entire equator. Afterwards, it'll go past both whirlwinds and lightning in the upper atmosphere, and at a depth of thousands of kilometers, the needle will dive into an ocean of liquid metallic hydrogen with temperatures ranging from 6 to 20,000 degrees Celsius. The friction against this layer will be so tremendous that on the way to the solid core, the needle will slow down and definitely won't be able to come out the other side. Most likely, it'll just get stuck in the solid core without even compressing it enough to form a black hole. But at the same time, the huge perturbation from the movement of the needle at the speed of light through the layers of Jupiter will mix them like milk in your morning coffee. And although we'll never see the needle again, gigantic storms on the gas giant's surface will be hard to miss. This will unambiguously prove that Jupiter has a solid core. But if we suddenly discover that this isn't the case, the consequences of the experiment will be much more catastrophic. It sounds incredible, but one needle launched at the speed of light is capable of destroying Jupiter. Scientists are so unsure of the physics of gas giants that they fully admit the possibility that the core of Jupiter is not solid but liquid, with hydrogen still exhibiting metallic properties and creating a magnetic field. This means that a needle launched at the speed of light will instantly destabilize all the inside layers of Jupiter with its impulse. This will lead to an unpredictable change in its shape, and therefore to unforeseen changes in the gravitational field so that all the satellites of the gas giant might go out of their orbits at the same time. But that's not the worst yet. A needle that crashes into a core of liquid hydrogen at the speed of light can create an area of immense compression. In other words, all the conditions for a nuclear reaction, like in the very center of the Sun. As a result, Jupiter will flash for a few moments like a real star. We'll be able to see two suns in the sky at once, but the flash won't pass without a trace for Jupiter. Without a solid core, gravity may be weaker than a powerful nuclear explosion in the planet's core. This means that the gas giant will turn into an enormous gas cloud that will quickly spread throughout the solar system and set off another chain reaction. Now, Jupiter holds thousands of asteroids of various sizes in its orbit, and if Jupiter suddenly evaporates, they'll scatter randomly, crashing into all the planets in a row. Moreover, the sudden disappearance of the most powerful gravitational field apart from the Sun will destabilize the entire system. The orbits of inner planets like Earth will narrow down so that we can expect not only asteroid bombardments, but also unbearable heat that can be deadly to all living things. Well, according to the experiment results, I have two pieces of news for you. 
The good news is that a needle launched into Jupiter at the speed of light will be able to tear off the veil of its mysterious structure, confirming or refuting one of the theories. The bad news is that such a probing of the gas giant, with a probability of 50%, will turn the entire Earth, along with its scientists, into an extra crispy ember. Would you risk it for the sake of science?